Hi there everyone. Today is a pretty exciting product review video because we are reviewing this. This is the Sub 250 Nanofly 20. It's a two inch 1S micro drone available with analog video or walk snail avatar or HD zero. And Sub 250 are a pretty new company. And as you might expect for a new company, they've done a lot of things right with this little drone and a few things wrong. In this video, we're gonna be going through everything that they did right, and I'm gonna be showing you how to fix everything that they did wrong. And it's worth it, because when you fix the snags with this little drone, it really is a fantastic little bind and fly micro, whether you're looking to start out in FPV or whether you've been flying forever. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it and put this guy on the bench. Okay, now that we've got the Nanofly 20 on the bench, let me take you through everything that Sub 250 did right when they built this drone. We'll start with the frame. The frame is a single piece of carbon fiber. It's a really nice design. They've used a triangular truss structure for the arms, which is gonna be really rigid, really stiff, have great vibration performance. The motors have plug connections. They're not directly soldered. And the frame has little cutouts for the motor plugs. So if you need to replace a motor, you can just take those three screws out, unplug the motor, replace it. It's really, really easy. The frame also has a cutout for the USB port at the bottom, and that makes it just so easy to plug and unplug this little quad from your computer so that you can configure all your settings that you need to. Much easier, I think, than having the USB port on the side. I really prefer this bottom style USB for micros. The battery harness is also really nicely designed. It's designed to fit these 1S 450 milliamp hour size cells, and it's tight, it's secure, but without being difficult to get the battery in and out, you can just slide the battery in pretty easily and remove it just as easily, but it doesn't slide around or move around in flight. If we turn the quad over now, we can look at the motors. And these are 1002 size, 21,000 kV motors. So they are a really nice spot, I think, in terms of performance. They don't hurt the battery too much. They've got plenty of authority and control for this two inch prop. And they're nicely color matched to the rest of the design. I think overall they're, they're perfectly good motors, um, as good as you would get on any bind and fly of this sort of size. The next thing I wanna talk about is the battery connector. Now, Sub 250 are using the GNB27 style battery connector for this drone. And this is by far the highest performing battery connector of any of the sort of 1S, 2S style battery connectors. It's higher performing, massively higher performing than PH 2.0 and higher performing than BT 2.0 as well. It's really, I think, the, the way that micros are going, this is gonna be the battery connector for the future. You will need to make sure that you get batteries with a matching GNB27 connector. Obviously, GNB make them. Um, you'll also need to make sure that you have a charger that can charge these cells because GNB27 is not as common as BT 2.0 or PH 2.0 yet. Um, so just something to be aware of, but it is a higher performing connector. So it is a better choice for a micro like this. It gives you longer flight times and uh, yeah, more power with less battery sag. If we talk now about the flight controller, and there's a lot to like about the flight controller on this little drone. It's an F411 flight controller. So it's the, the small F4 perfect for a little micro um, all-in-one like this. With cloud build in Betaflight 4.4, we no longer need to worry about running out of flash storage on these F411, on these F411 chips, so that's really nice to see. And it has a lot of features, this flight controller. It's got 16 megabytes of black box storage. So, I mean, that's a huge amount. That's much more than you would typically see on a little micro like this. It's got Express LRS built in. Now it is a SPI receiver for Express LRS, which is not as good as a UART based receiver because you can't update it as frequently. But honestly with Betaflight 4.4 just released and Express LRS 3.0 supported with Betaflight 
I think a spy receiver is still okay for a little micro like this. Um, certainly it saves a bit of board space and that might be how they've managed to, uh, to squeeze that extra black box on, which I really like. For the video transmitter, I've got the Walksnail Avatar 1S video transmitter on here. Now you can get this with an analog video transmitter and that actually comes built onto the flight controller. Um, so it's a 200 milliwatt VTX built onto the flight controller. You can also get a Walksnail Avatar like I've got here and an HD0 Whoop Light uh, VTX on here as well. So a lot of choices for analog or digital video uh, with this bind and fly, which is great to see. The ESC on this little all-in-one flight controller comes flashed with Blue J 96 kilohertz PWM from the factory. And that's the configuration that I would suggest for a quad of this size. 96K PWM does give you a little bit more efficiency on these tiny motors. Let's take a look at some flight footage now. And I think this is an area where the Nano Fly 20 really excels. This is unstabilized footage recorded on board using the Walksnail VRX. The quality is great and the quad is really nice and smooth. It's even got plenty of performance for light freestyle flips and rolls. And that's really great to see, especially on a 1S quad like this. This footage was captured using my custom tune for the Nanofly 20. So if you're interested to see what changes I made, there's more on that later in the video. To be able to capture footage of this quality in a quad that's this small, this lightweight and this quiet just opens up a whole new world of possibilities for FPV and flying in places that you would never dream of flying a heavier quad like a 5 inch. If you want to try the Nanofly 20 out for yourself, then there are links down in the video description to where you can pick yours up today. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you use them, I get a small commission, you help support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. So I'm sure it seems like the review is going far too nicely at this point, right? Sub 250 have done a lot of things right with this drone. Well, now we're going to talk about the things that they did wrong. And the reason that I'm so excited for this part of the video is that all of the things that are wrong with this little drone, we can fix. So I'm going to be telling you what the problems are, and then I'm going to be showing you how you can fix them. The first thing that we're going to look at is weight. And these are all the parts that I suggest that you remove from your Nanofly 20 to save a little bit of weight. We have the heatsink for the chip on the Walksnail VTX. So in the lighter version of this VTX, the uh, Walksnail have removed the heatsink that goes over this chip. You can remove the heatsink as well. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You can just slide a scalpel blade under the edge of the heatsink and just gradually, gently lift it all the way around. There's no glue securing it down, no adhesive, it's just this kind of thermal paste. So if you take your time and go, go carefully with it, you can lift that heat sink off. And this weighs about 1.52 grams, so it's worth removing it and saving that weight. Similarly, on top of the stack, Sub250 have put this um, plastic spacer here. I would suggest that you remove that as well if you can. You can just take that off the, the stack screws and then if you do need to replace the spacer with something, you can use uh, little M2 nylon um, spacers like this. This also just helps save a little bit more weight. This plastic spacer really isn't needed for anything. The final part that I removed is the cover on the back of the Walksnail camera. Um, again, the lighter version of the Walksnail VTX the camera doesn't have this uh, cover on the back of it and it's not really needed for anything other than just to to sort of cover the back of the camera cover the connector up so you can just unscrew that remove it again that saves a little bit more weight once we've done that weight saving the whole drone comes in at just about 40 grams and if we add a typical 1s 450 milliamp hour battery the flight weight is 52.6 grams the next problem we're going to address is with the ESC settings. Now, I found that if I landed this quad and disarmed with a battery that was sort of 3.8 volts, and then I rearmed again, one or other of the motors wouldn't be able to start spinning. It would sort of twitch for a while, and then uh, the ESC would disarm itself. Now, this is pretty common with micros, particularly if you're running 96K PWM, and it's to do with the motor startup power. 
So let's dive into the ESC settings and fix that now. All right, so to fix this, we're going to go to escconfigurator.com. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. We're going to plug our NanoFly 20 into our computer over USB, open the port selection and select the Betaflight COM port there, click Connect, and then click this big green Connect button in the top right. That will connect to Betaflight. Before we connect to the ESC, we're going to need to plug in a battery. So do that now. There we go. Once the battery is connected, we should be able to click Read Settings. This is going to show us all of our ESC settings. The one we care about is the minimum startup power. Now this will typically be around 1025. I would increase it to maybe 1050. And that will just ensure that the motors are always able to start spinning even if the battery isn't full. Once you've got that set, you can just hit Write Settings. That will write all the settings to the ESC and then you're done. You can hit disconnect, unplug everything and the problem should be fixed. The next problem is a little more tricky. This guy doesn't have an official target in Betaflight Configurator and that means that you can't update it from Betaflight 4.3, which is what it ships with, to Betaflight 4.4. Now that wouldn't normally be a problem, Betaflight 4.3 flies great, but this has an Express LRS spy receiver. And that means that if you want to use Express LRS 3 with the SPI receiver on this board, you need to be running Betaflight 4.4. Fortunately, there is a workaround for this. I spent a bit of time researching it, putting it together and testing it. And I'm going to take you through step by step the process to get this guy updated from Betaflight 4.3 to 4.4. So now let me take you through the process of updating this quad to Betaflight 4.4 step by step. And the first thing we're going to do is back up our configuration. So we're going to go into the CLI and we're going to type dump space all. And that is going to print out every part of our configuration so that we can save it all. And then should we need to, we can always get back to a known good configuration. Once that dump has all saved out, you can click save to file and call it something like original dump and save it. Once you've saved the dump, you're also going to want to save the diff. So clear the output history, type diff all, and then save that to file. And maybe you call that something like original diff. Once you've backed up your configuration, we're ready to flash to Betaflight 4.4. Now to do this successfully, you're going to need to be using the latest nightly build of Betaflight configurator. And for me, that's uh, this 10.10 .10 version. So I'll put a link to that down in the video description. You'll need to download the latest version of Configurator to make this work. You also need to make sure that Enable Expert Mode is ticked because that's going to give us some of the functionality that we need. So let's go into Update Firmware. Now the target that we're going to need to use to update the board is this Neutron RC F411SX1280. Now that may or may not be the target that's on your board right now but it is going to be the target that you're going to need to use to update to Betaflight 4.4. So select that target, and then we're going to need to come down to this custom defines box here within the build configuration. If you can't see this, that's because you haven't enabled expert mode. So go back and make sure you've enabled expert mode. The custom define that we're going to need to use is this one flash underscore W25 Q128FV. It's all caps. Type that in exactly as you see it here and then hit load firmware online and that will start the cloud build and will produce the file that you need. Then you can click flash firmware. Now this should complete without any problems. If you do have any issues at this stage, you may need to fix your drivers for beta flight flight controllers. I'll put a link down in the video description to Impulse RC Driver Fixer, which is a great tool that will get all that sorted out for you. But assuming everything's going to go smoothly, you should just see it start flashing like this. Once the flash has complete, you can reconnect to the board. And now you'll see a notice that says some custom defaults are available. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. Then you're going to want to go into the CLI, click Load from File, and then you're going to want to apply this NanoFly20 diff, which is my working diff for Betaflight 
So you can just hit open and then click execute and that will configure the board correctly to work with Betaflight 4.4. Once that's finished, the whole thing will reboot and you should find that you have a few nice extras like this custom pitune that I've done for this drone, which should be a big improvement on the Betaflight default, which is what the drone comes with. You will need to go back and configure your modes as you want them set up, and you'll also need to go back and uh, rebind your ExpressLRS receiver, um, but now you'll be able to use ExpressLRS 3.0 as well, because that's what's supported in Betaflight 4.4. And that brings us to the end of this review, but it was a bit more than a review, I think, because not only did we review this product, but we also improved it, updated the firmware, fixed the ESC settings, and even shed some weight as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button so other people find it easily, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos from me. If you want to support more work like this, then I do have a Patreon and a Buy Me A Coffee, and I'll put links to those down in the video description. You can join my Patreon from just a few dollars a month and it gives you some neat benefits like a special area on my Discord server, sneak peeks of the new projects that I'm working on and deeper access to the data that I'm generating through AOS Labs. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.